tiny elephant. Tiny elephant. There are no real sounds at all, not even the sea, and one is surrounded by the sea, they're tiny islands. I think you're more conscious of the smells and the warmth. It's obviously a very beautiful place. That's funny. In an atmosphere like this, there should be lots of cicadas singing. And the friends looked at me and Dad looked at me and said, but they are making an awful din. Oh, the cicada, I guess, the noise of the frogs, um, always, in all the islands. Um, hummingbirds don't really make a noise. Uh, and there are really no animals. There are no animals except your dogs and cats. Mm. And very few birds. Really? Mm. Possibly on a walk that goes round past the pylon and it goes past some tall Scots pines. The Scots pines are always noisy. I can still hear the wind in the Scots pines. And the friends looked at me and Dad looked at me and said, but they are making an awful din. And I heard nothing.
concerts, violinists and flautists sway in mine, wrapped to the sound of invisible music. Invisible music, 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 I'm going backwards, and that I think probably is easier. Thank you. 
when you used to listen to the radio, whether it's words or music, it was never an effort. It just came into your head and somehow you were listening. The sense that you are adrift. This feeling of um, you know, this sort of elevation in emotion that you get uh, having got to the top of somewhere, and where it's completely uh, wild and you're on your own and whatnot. that I'm making more mistakes now because of being more deaf, which is a shame. I think I'm becoming a bit quieter. She said to me that she thought that hearing loss was the theft of intimacy. The sense that you are adrift. So it's socially isolating, I think that's just the biggest thing. Most people are walking wounded in one way or another. It's just a la 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 sort of thing. Speech rhythms are enormously important um, because they are part of this whole picture of contextual clues that you have. I'm not hearing, I'm just sort of uh, filling in the gaps. <laughs> She said to me that she thought that hearing loss was the theft of intimacy.
everything underwater is muffled and you're trying to make sense of it and there's also very often that sort of rushing feeling or you hear your own heart beating. Violinists are always very interesting because they get so agonised and to me it actually just looks quite ridiculous because there's no noise. I can hear a muffled babble of words like somebody talking through three duvets. What I rely upon is harmonious speech and the grammar has to be there's also the phenomenon of your brain filling in the gaps from one sensory organ and interpreting it through another. There are about 50 sounds in the English language and the combination of them is A single word will sort of float up to the surface and I'll think, oh, they're talking about, I don't know, hippopotamuses or something. It's the amount of noise and it's very distracting, so I get diverted onto listening to other fragments of, of sound that's coming in. And, uh, uh, yes, like that. So that would attract my attention, and now I've lost what it was. What was it you were saying? <laughs> it's gone because there's a combination of yes, that uh, and sort of the slight dull, dulling down of short-term memory. So if it's interrupted suddenly like that, I yeah. may not have yeah. the pick-up point to continue on from where we went. And I'm not used to having all this echoing. Do you hear a whistle just then? Tiny. Yeah. But you know, that magnified is what you can get if you get the feedback. So it is, it's whistling on probably about three notes, three or four notes at the same time, and it carries on and it gets higher and lower, but it doesn't really stop. That was a distortion of the high frequencies. I get to the stage where it really stops me thinking. It's almost easier not to hear any very much at all. You have to switch off and try and make sense of this jumble. I don't Strange experience. People glide by as if they were moving on feet wearing socks. They turn, they seem to be slowed down as though time has no longer any meaning. Sometimes a voice up above burbles some mysterious soft message, no doubt an urgent instruction to one of the girls at the tills. But around me, all is quietly peaceful. Even people in a hurry seem to glide 
almost as though they were skating on a wonderful silent skating rink. It's a very cosy feeling. Nobody seems to be stressed. Only me, occasionally, at the thought of having to talk to somebody at the till. Drop the sorry. <laughs> it's not your fault. just a wooden clatter. It's just like wooden cakes bashing together. Thank you. 
best thing about getting hearing aids was hearing bird song. It was wonderful. And I still enjoy that. I can't identify the bird. But I think because there was hearing loss in my family, we didn't learn it when I was young enough. Chattering sparrows up here, they nest next door. And sometimes we have, you know, 10 to 15 sparrows chattering away here, and they were breeding this spring, and it was rather noisy. <laughs> the birds I can mostly hear, um, they're some of them very high pitched. I mean, the buzzard I love hearing. Um, and I can hear that no problem at all. We have a lot of lower pitched birds here, hundreds and hundreds of rooks. It's absolutely phenomenal in the evenings when they all come into to nest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can sometimes hear skylarks if I'm out for a walk over towards Salisbury, there are sometimes skylarks there. Well, I think the, the blackbird's pretty good. One evening, many years ago, and hearing, probably before I had hearing loss, this extraordinary whirring sound and thinking, what is this? Is this a fleet of bicycles coming up behind me? What on earth is going on? And it was swans going overhead, and just you could hear the wind beats. It was, it was so beautiful and so absolutely wonderful. that I had been missing so much. I really didn't. It was quite a surprise. It's a bit bizarre, really. You know, if you hear something, great. If you don't hear very well, so what? Things, if they're going to get worse, they're going to get worse, but sufficient are to the day. So I do what I can to prepare, and what happens, happens. And that's all I can do. Are you going to find a better way of doing it? The group we have is very nice, very nice. And they're very bright. Annabelle, Anna, your mum, Sarah, Sue. Margaret, Rosemary, Bridget, Linda, Helen, Sue, Annabelle, Margaret, too, Sandy, Keith, Sarah, Jan, Margaret, Rosemary, Bridget, Linda, Helen, Sue, Annabelle,
I suddenly felt the world is opening up. So I read everything I can. I go to science things and I read about space with great excitement and quantum theories. I am enchanted. <laughs> But it's hugely important to know that you can survive. like a big kiss looks exactly the same as would you like a biscuit? Uh, I heard the shepherd herding his sheep. I heard that strippers always come cheap. Do you like swimming? But that, the S is not visible. So what it actually looks like is do you like women? If you have a partner or a husband who snores, take your hearing aids out. And that's really, that's wonderful. Philip snored like a trooper. I could become a feature in a landscape. 
Every day is a day for hunting. I sit still looking for telltale signs, frowns, gestures, twitches that show that something moves. Any conversational ambush leaves only a trail of sound. The meaning has long since escaped. Whole hours I can spend straining for little mouse sounds. Like a cat, I observe a whole landscape of noises. Myself admiring fungi. They emerge silently. They exist. Sometimes in hundreds they copy the leaf litter. I empathize with the ink caps. The scarlet of the poisonous screams in the aisles of the trees. Though the branches are empty and no birds sing, the ground is populous. In dreams is the sound turned up. The game of conversation yeah, yeah. resumes. Yeah, the one that's all the kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. At the top of the box. No, I think, yeah, the white. Oh, that one. Coming back to life in sleep, I relish nightmares. Chased by a howling sun, I revel in noise. Swimming through motion waves, I hear the hiss and swish of the water. Running, I hear feet. Visions speak, colours shout, purple and red argue, lemon and orange clash. I hear the quiet calm of green.
at night when I take my hearing aids out and everything goes quiet and it's a sense of freedom. It's as though your head suddenly become lighter. It's, it is the feeling you used to get when you surfaced. But when you take your hearing aids out, it, you do it because you want a breath, you want to breathe, you want to rest. The breakdown of your body constantly is a bit frightening because you can see over the hill. You can actually see over the hill. Am I frightened of death? I am frightened of the business of dying, but not specifically of death. I'm not religious. I don't think there is a life after death. But if you haven't got an afterlife any more than you had a before life, it's not a problem. And I can quite understand that I had no before life. I don't remember myself as existing before I was born. So I don't imagine I will remember myself existing after I'm dead. And indeed, my mother, who is now very old, doesn't remember herself existing from one week to the next now. I gave up religion when I was seven year old. <laughs> I thought, I, I thought, uh, it can't be much of a god this, that makes you go to Sunday school. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time in synagogues as a child and there are various services through the year that mark various things but there's one in particular that's the memorial service on our most solemn day of the year, Yom Kippur, and that is very much about mortality. Up a fjord on the north side of the island, and we stood. It was a beautiful day like this, and the hills were mountains were covered in snow, and you could look out. And in the far distance was a, a small island where the Arctic Circle crossed it, and then beyond that, you would simply come to the ice and the polar ice cap. And I think it was this feeling of um, of being on, right on the edge of. Uh, civilized world. It's obviously a very beautiful place. <laughs> <laughs>